let's mute our classic suitcase for now and let's turn on record on both the MIDI and the audio channels and see what we get when I hit record. Here we go, we have all of our MIDI data recorded across all of the channels. That's uh, gonna, let's have, just have a look at that. Uh, we should see data from channels one, two, three, four, and all sorts of notes and controls and who knows what. And we've also got the stereo audio, audio recording at the same time. We can delete that audio now and I'll take the MIDI that I recorded from the montage and move it up to my classic suitcase and see how that works. Sounds good. I think maybe it didn't monitor it. I don't know. Okay, but the message here is that we can record the entirety of the montage's MIDI performance on a single channel. And for something like the CFX concert where we just have essentially have one instrument despite the fact that it's split, it's split across four parts, that's desirable. But what about another performance? Let's get rid of that data and bring up the 8 amps and a TC performance. What this does, in fact I'll talk about it while it's playing, let's record this. What we have here is eight different guitars on eight different channels and it's going to play each one in turn. So my DAW is recording a stereo track for all of those and a single block of MIDI that includes all the data for all of those different instruments. Let's stop that now. So when I inspect the MIDI here, everything is in one block and it's difficult to pull it apart. What would be much better to do would be to record each of these parts onto a separate channel. So let's do that. I'll get rid of everything I've recorded here and let's get this set up for multi-channel recording. I'm actually going to get rid of my montage port uh, MIDI data and start again. I'm going to say it's a new external MIDI track I want montage port 1 and channel 1. Make sure that ascending is checked and I'm going to create 8 tracks. And there they are. Now depending on how you've been uh, using this before, you may or may not need to do a bit of extra work here because by default this is going to respond to all ports and all channels. And that's no good because they'll all be recording exactly the same thing. So what I actually need to do is I need to limit each one of these to, this, to the channel that it's supposed to be listening to. So port one, uh, part one should be listening to channel one and putting out to channel one. And uh, it looks like I'm going to have to do all of these, so I'll do that as quickly as possible. And hopefully not make any mistakes in the process. Hopefully that's it. I'm going to shift select all of those and hit record enable. And then let's do that uh, audition again and see the MIDI data being recorded across all of the channels. There we go, 
so what we now have is eight separate MIDI regions, each containing the MIDI data for the particular part that was playing. So I can solo any of those and play them back individually uh, or do whatever I like to them. Uh, if I wanted to, put to uh, take that one there and uh, just loop it uh, so that it keeps on playing through the rest of the uh, audition, uh, well, why not? Uh, we could uh, do that and, and have part one playing on repeat all the way through. Which would be a very strange thing to do. <laughs> 